It's a chilly December afternoon, and the Boston Bruins are on the move. The team is headed 3,180 miles west to Vancouver, British Columbia, to start a three games and four nights road trip across Western Canada. Tonight's game against the Canucks will be played at Rogers Arena, the same building where, in June 2011, the Bruins last won Lord Stanley's Cup. Assistant equipment manager Matty Falconer was with the team that night and takes a few moments to reminisce. Oh, man, I think I got the cup like right around here. Yeah. Bergie picked me up right there. Everybody went to Timmy and they all dispersed out here and I was running over here. That's awesome. Unreal. Anyways, that's history. On to the next one, right? On to the next one. Head coach Bruce Cassidy remains in the NHL COVID protocol and did not make the trip. However, after serving a three-game suspension, Brad Marchand is back and will be in the lineup tonight. As the Bruins take the ice, one of their key players will be sixth-year defenseman Brandon Carl. Nice play, Fliggy. Ready to go to that halls, huh? Three, two, three, two. It's a good hit. Hey, buddy, come on. I don't know. I didn't even see. I just heard the crowd. That's a great play. Great play. Way to spin out of that. Look up ice. Nice job. Watch back to going. Bergeron's tip ties the game in the third period, but neither team can score again in regulation or overtime. So it moves to the shootout, where the Canucks win it. The Bruins take their point and move on. Less than 24 hours later, the black and gold are in Edmonton, Alberta to face the Oilers in game two of their trip. Once again, assistant coach Joe Sacco will fill in for Bruce Cassidy. All we need tonight is we need everybody doing their part, right? Everybody's ready to step in. Whatever your role is, you bring it. You bring it for 60 minutes, okay? And that makes everybody else's job easier. It makes your linemates' job easier. It makes the decor's job easier. Everybody ready to do their part here tonight, all right? We got Bergie's line starting. We got Forbes, Charlie. Yeah! Lead, us, lead us in the net. Yeah! Behind the bench with Coach Sacco tonight will be Chris Kelly who played six seasons with the Bees and helped them win the 2011 Stanley Cup. Now he's in his first season as an assistant coach. Matty, Bob, you guys got me? Hey. Playing in behind, good things happen. Playing in behind. Good job, boys, eh? Good job attacking there. Hey, great job stopping there, right? It wasn't perfect, but he stopped on it. Just took that guy uh, nurse wide on the first shift. Yeah. If you got, hey, I don't give a if you dump it in and skate it in. We just got to make sure we're not turning pucks over. I prefer you take them, skate it in, right? Yeah. Middle. Couldn't have done it off any better myself, fellas. Good job. Jake DeBrus gives Boston a 2-0 lead in the second, while Linus Allmark stops everything the Oilers throw at him before the NHL's leading goal scorer, Leon Dreisaitl, brings Edmonton back. Yeah! 
With the score now tied, the Bruins, deep into the third period of their second game in two nights, must find a way to answer. After being up by two goals, the Boston Bruins now find themselves tied with the Edmonton Oilers late in the third period. It's a big test for assistant coach Chris Kelly. Good things happen. Shot ready, right? Good things happen. Near side now, Smith to the near circle, across right circle, fired by Grizzly. He scores! His first goal of the year, Bruins three, Oilers two. Great job tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, that was the third period that we had to play, right, fellas? We talked about that. You guys responded excellent in the third period, and we played on our toes, and we took the play to them. Okay, and we, you know, good for you guys. That's what we needed to do there. Great response, huge win, tough circumstances, back-to-back -back games, but uh, we're not surprised. We're not surprised. You guys. So good job there. Tomorrow, we'll enjoy a day off. Okay, oh, day yeah. off. We'll get ready to finish this trip off on the right note in Calgary. Right. right. third and final stop of this trip is the Saddle Dome in Calgary, Alberta, where Trent Frederick and the boys will take on the Flames in a Saturday night showdown. Shoot that three times, single at once, you know? That's just going in! Yeah! Five points! Yeah, baby! Let's go! Are you kidding me? Yeah. Great job, great job, guys. I don't want to right. I don't want to say that pass was the cliff. Huh? That was the cliff? I was yelling because Blue Cheese was coming hard. The Bruins make it 3 0 in the second before the Flames get one back. Once again, it all comes down to the third period. Two assists for Trent Frederick and 40 big saves by Linus Allmark as the Bruins defeat the Flames 4-2 and end their tough road trip with five out of a possible six points. You're everywhere. After traveling back to Boston and enjoying a day off, the Bruins start the new week at Warrior Ice Arena, where head coach Bruce Cassidy returns after two weeks in the NHL COVID protocol. So I had two or three bad days, and then 
that's it. But you're in protocol, you're in protocol, so you're separated and isolated. And so I Zoom with the guys a couple times uh, every day, game day for power play, and then a couple times just post game to, to address a few things. So, and Joe was great. They did a great job, obviously. You know, and I think it was good for Joe to get back at it, to be honest with you. He'd been a head coach before, and hopefully that raises his profile. He did a good job, uh, but I'm also looking forward to getting back at it. Bruins arrive for work against the Vegas Golden Knights, they face a new round of adversity. Craig Smith and then Brad Marchand have been placed in the NHL's COVID protocol. So a tough matchup against a good team is made more difficult, and no one knows that better than Thomas Nosek, who played his last four seasons in Vegas. So one guy in front, one guy. Oh, I thought I'll face off. Yeah, yeah, oh, face off. You come off the wall. Yeah, you come off the wall or or uh, around the world, whatever. Yeah. Oh, I thought I tipped it. Jesus, Chandler. <laughs> you good? Yeah. It's a rough outing for the Bruins as the Golden Knights score three in the first and one in the second before Patrice Bergeron gets one back in the third. 4-1 Vegas the final. A tough loss against Vegas, but the Bruins are doing their best to stay in the holiday spirit. So the team has set up a Christmas tree at Warrior Ice Arena and created personal ornaments for everyone to hang. So they're up high for you, lower. Sure, guys. There we go. Nice. Prime real estate. There we are. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's kind of cute. Any of them? Oh, mine. <laughs> Probably yours. Probably mine. Spot this one. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Huh? Check this out. All right. Where's an open spot here? Beautiful. I feel like I would do this. You are tricky when you got big old fat fingers. That's what I'm saying. That most of it's terrible. You put the bigger teamwork makes the dream work here. Oh my god, that's so much more easier than what I've done. Boing. Thanks, bud. No problem, brother. Let's do the same thing on that one. Tippy toes that one. Well. Merry Christmas! As the Bruins prepare for a three-game road trip, they get more bad news. When team captain Patrice Bergeron becomes the third player added into the NHL COVID protocols. But I don't think you can ever replace Marshy, Bergy. Uh, you know, different, you know, high impact guys in your lineup just by plugging someone in there. It's got to be more about how the team performs as a group than one individual, and that'll be the case here. 
you know, we're going on the road playing against some teams that have, have had some of their issues of their own. Uh, the Islanders have gone through having to replace players. So, you know, they've, other teams have to, to battle through it. That's what's in front of us right now. As the Bruins arrive for their game against the Islanders, the coronavirus outbreak continues to impact the team. Anton Bleed, Trent Frederick, and Jeremy Swayman have all been added to the NHL COVID protocols. Then prior to puck drop, Oscar Steen, called up from Providence to play tonight, is also sidelined. So the black and gold already missing their captain and leading scorer among other key players will only have 11 forwards available in this one. It also means that Kyle Kaiser, who has never played in the NHL, will be the team's backup goaltender tonight. This is awesome. Unbelievable. Holy cow. Enjoy it. That was lucky. Oh. Ruth! Ruth! Oh! oh. That's the way to go to the net. Oh, wait, Linus! I couldn't see. I think it did get deflected, though. It, it must have hit off a body. It said it had to have hit off a body because there were so many guys in front. Yeah, it's my glove, I think. Did it? Keep going, baby. Sorry, you ready? Yeah. I was trying to block her away from you. Yeah. That's it, man, that's it. Good shift there, good shift, good shift. Good shift, pasta. Come on, boys, we're gonna get one here. A frustrating night for the shorthanded Bruins out on Long Island as they put in a great effort and pour 41 shots on net, only to come away with a 3-1 loss. The following day, the Bruins are scheduled to charter to Montreal. But with COVID continuing to spread throughout the league, that game is postponed, followed shortly by a complete schedule pause for the entire NHL until after Christmas. You know, things can always be a worse situation, right? So that's what I always think about. And you either stay positive, have that positive outlook. Um, but things can always be worse. So it's, it, you know, you got to do another test or two, and it's not ideal, but you got to do it. And you just got to follow the protocol and do what you can. Um, and just do your part and try not to spread this thing even more, especially throughout your locker room, your team. Um, but uh, there's a lot of cases right now, so we just we got to do our part and, and hopefully we can uh, control it a little better. But if not, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that are involved in making those decisions, and it's always in the best interest from a health perspective. Um, you know, it does get problematic when you're losing nine players and, and trying to field a roster. And, you know, how do you navigate? And what are, what are the risks and what are the circumstances that, uh, you know, lead to where we are? It's just a matter of, of trying to adjust and uh, on the fly uh, to some degree. You just have to, to go with it. And I think everybody is facing it at this point in time. The league makes absolutely the best decisions with regard to, First and foremost, the health of the players and the staff and everybody involved. And uh, but the whole world's facing it. 